All right, folks, what do you do if your relationship is absolutely crumbling? Or if you've got a front row seat to somebody else's relationship crumbling, The Office helps us explore this. Men of light. Okay, so if you ever watched The Office, uh, either the British version or the US version, but we're gonna be talking about the US version, that is a show that thrives on awkward humor. But sometimes it's a little less humor and a lot more awkward, and such is the case with The Dinner Party, in which Michael and Jan, Jan was Michael's boss, uh, she lost her job, but she's now stay at home trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life, and Michael is supporting her, and they have an exceptionally toxic and unhealthy relationship. And they throw this dinner party where they're putting on airs that everything's great between them and all of their friends and office mates are seeing right through it. So what do you do if your relationship is falling apart or what do you do if you've got a front row seat? How do you respond? Let's dive in. Oh, how are you? Come on in. Oh, Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, I'm so Good glad we finally, uh, finally got to do this with you great. guys. It's great. Uh, you want to, uh, you want to Take their coats, baby? Yes, I would. Okay. Right. So, what do you been Jan doing? Jan thinks that Pam and Let's Michael see, since I saw you an hour ago? Yeah. I have definitely been not. getting ready and then driving over here. Well, so. we've been doing pretty much the same thing. Really? <laughs> Except driving. <laughs> we... we got you this. Oh, well, oh, Pam, Dino. thank you. Thanks. That's so nice. This will be great to cook with. Mm. Really. We'll have a seat or, <laughs> in, or I don't know. Make yourself oh, we'll to home. This is our casa. <laughs> really nice. So, yeah. what do you guys think? Should we do the tour first? We have appetizers first. Tour. Let's do the tour first. Okay. 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 Uh, you have a preference, babe? Upstairs first. Totally your call, babe. All right. Well, let's go then. I see right. upstairs. Oh, the babe just pretending that. Oh, uh, you guys doing okay. a little construction? Oh, just redoing the sliding glass door. Yeah. Oh. So sorry about this god awful carpet. We are still a work in progress here. Well, wow. that's so, this. Is my office. Yep. Never been used. Not super exciting. No. And this is my workspace. <laughs> this is it. Check that out. You smell it? Uh-huh. As you can smell, there's a lot of different odors going on in here. So you have an office and a workspace. I do. You know, I just, I cannot create in the same space that I conduct business. I'm sure you're the same with your noodles. Smell. It's fire. Uh-huh, Bonfire. Bond. Men love this one. James Bonfire. Yeah. I am Bonfire. James Bonfire. <laughs> Michael Scott. <sighs> when I get frustrated or irritated or angry, I come up here and I just smell all my candles. And it just poof goes away. Just like that. Just like that. So this is the <laughs> master bedroom and uh, these walls they used to be like white, like an asylum. So I wanted it to be softer, so I had it painted an eggshell white. Guess what? <laughs> camera white and eggshell white are exactly the same oh. color. <laughs> exactly. I thought you said that you were going to tie each other. Well, I'm you. <laughs> what a cute bench. Thanks. Well, we see here that Jan has taken over, this was Michael's house, and she's taken over most of the rooms and she wants to make it her own and now, and, and you can see like little passive aggressive jabs as they're trying to pretend that everything's okay but still get out their frustrations. White and off-white are the exact same color. White and eggshell white are the, are the exact same color, right? This happens when we are conflict avoidant. When instead of addressing things head on, we're afraid that it's gonna turn into an ugly fight and so we just hold back. The problem with that is that it leaks through in these passive aggressive behaviors and people feel that. Every time someone's passive aggressive, every time someone makes a little dig while smiling through their teeth at you, you feel it and it builds up over time. And this facade of happiness that Michael and Jan have is sooner or later is gonna crumble. Thanks, that's my bed. Jan has uh, some space issues, so I curl up on that puppy. Really? Because it seems pretty narrow and short. It's actually a lot bigger than it seems. Look at that. See? He fits perfectly. <laughs> Oh man, such a <laughs> I finally broke down and so, bought myself so unhealthy. a plasma TV. <laughs> oh my Check gosh. It out. I actually hung this on the wall myself. That's good. I want to show you something. A lot of people in the room, you need more space. Voila, <laughs> right into the wall. Wow. Sometimes I will just stand here and watch television for hours. I love it. <laughs> I love this TV. Oh, and I also... And you see, you see Jan, though, when he's talking about the TV, she just looks aside. I mean, she's so annoyed 
with anything that has to do with Michael's wants, Michael's needs, Michael's desires. She's a deeply unhappy person and she's clinging to Michael because she doesn't know what her life is about anymore, right? She lost her career. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know what she wants. And so she's trying to fill this hole with this relationship and the relationship's all wrong for her. But she chose that she's taking it out on him. She's punishing him for her choice to be with him. She's kicking him out of the bed. She's literally taking over the whole space and because, and even as she does that, she is blaming him for her unhappiness. And he's taken a role of, it's my job to make her happy. I don't wanna be alone, I wanna keep her. And so I'm gonna to kowtow and give in to every little thing that she wants. But as he does that and she's still unhappy, he, start, he resents her more and more and more and these things build up. Built this table. What is that, chestnut? No, I think that is either pine or Nordic cherry. It's pine, yeah. Michael, I'm just terrible at all this stuff, so uh, it's really cool. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he tried to set up my TiVo for me, but then I didn't have audio for a week. <laughs> if you ever need any help, I am just a phone call away. I bet you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I saw, uh, oh, your Dundies. I'm surprised they're not out on the coffee table for everybody to see. Well, it was between the uh, neon beer sign and the Dundies, so I said, honey, keep the trophies. Oh, honey, I have the best trophy right here. Oh. Aside from my Dundee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and how often that happens, like I'm gonna let you have a little bit of space, but I'm gonna resent how you use that space. Uh, this is this is ugly. This is not going well. Let's see what happens. How about a toast? Dally? Here's two good friends. Other Cheers. people showing up. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. That is sort of an oaky afterbirth. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? So, music? Should uh, we turn some music? Yeah. That sounds good. Do you guys remember my old assistant, Hunter? He is an excellent songwriter. Wait till you hear this. Okay, here we go. You took me by the hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Clearly so wrong, so right, all night, all right. But like clearly this is about Jan sleeping with her assistant as she's playing it in front of Michael. Oh yeah, this is so terrible. Oh, I can't even watch this. I can't. You know what? Hunter was a terrible assistant. That is why Ryan fired him. Well, I think he's probably just about as reliable as Pam, being that it usually takes you an afternoon to get back to me. Yeah. Sometimes I think she holds on to faxes. <laughs> I don't care what they say about me. I just want to eat. <laughs> Which I realize is a lot to ask for. At a dinner party. <laughs> no, it's a uh, hump. There's a hump. Joe Camel! Joe yes. Camel! Okay, oh, yes, no, first no, name no, of no, that no. animal, and the second name is the state where Helena is the capital. Montana. Oh! Joe Montana? Yes! yes. yes. Oh. Time, time. All right, two pieces. Why didn't you just say 49ers quarterback? All right, Mike. Mike, <laughs> Mike, 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 my turn. Mike, Mike, Mike. My turn. Mike, 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 my turn. Babe, can you just like what? really, whoa, <laughs> we're just like really. What, what? Like, can you oh. just simmer down? No, Seriously. I'm just making people laugh. No. Yes, I was, I was watching Jim's face. I was watching Jim. And he was <laughs> laughing. No, look, he's smiling. Look at him. He's laughing. Oh my God. Michael and Jan seem to be playing their own separate game. And it's called, let's see how uncomfortable we can make our guests. And they're both winning. So I'm <laughs> going to make a run for it. You'll never guess. I just got a message from my landlord. Apparently my apartment flooded. Something with the sprinkler. Oh, no. Pam? We should probably get going and see the damage. Oh, oh. okay. Well, you don't need two of you to do that. That's true. Um, dinner sounded delicious. Pam, oh. I'll see you at home. Thank you so much. It was a oh, great night. Jim, I don't think you're going to abandon this party here all by itself. I don't know, because everything I own is there. You can buy new stuff, but you can't buy a new party. Mm. That's true. That is a great point. <laughs> Come on down here. <laughs> Sit down <laughs> on that couch and be amongst friends, and we are not going to think about all your stuff being destroyed, all right? Michael, all right. you're up. All right, Let's here go. we go. Right. This is going to be fun. Ready? Go. All right, first name is Tom. No, 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 no names, no names, no rhyming, right, right, no right. sound alike. Right. Okay, okay, you're getting into my head. 
First name is blank, and he goes on a cruise. He goes on a Caribbean cruise. I don't know. Katie Holmes. No. Ah! Katie Holmes. But he married her. Oh, Dawson's Creek. No. No, it has to be a real person, Jim. Come on. Okay. No, no, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. Jim knows his Tom Cruise. Uh, okay. Um, rhymes with Arnold Schwarzenegger. No rhyming. Well, not That's really not... a rhyme. Okay. Another clue. Another clue. Okay. He's the governor of California. He is the Terminator. Those aren't helpful. Tom Cruise. No. Tom. <laughs> now, if you've seen the episode, uh, this escalates into something much, much worse where Michael and Jan finally it all comes to a head and he turns on his neon light again and she throws his dundee at the neon light and it breaks and he screams that's what she said at her like even when they're fighting he can't help but like do the that's what she, that's what she said joke but all of this comes to head as it was always going to this is a perfect example of what happens when we fail to actually resolve conflict in our relationship so how do we do that first of all instead of being an avoider or an attacker you want to be something called an affirmer Affirmers are able to admit their mistakes. Affirmers are able to take accountability for their own actions, but not those of others. Affirmers speak their mind in a calm, but direct and respectful way. Michael and Jan are not affirmers. They are alternately attackers or avoiders. They attack and then that gets so ugly that they avoid. They avoid the conflict and it just seeps through in passive aggressive ways until they get frustrated and angry enough that they explode at each other. In order to be an affirmer, it's five steps. First step is to recognize that you're getting upset. When you are getting upset, you're not in a headspace to actually resolve anything. It's just going to get ugly. You're either going to attack or withdraw. So stop and calm down is your second step. Stop and calm down. Take some deep breaths. Listen to some music, but not Hunter's music. Uh, listen to some music or, do, or, or scream into a pillow. Do whatever it takes to get the anger out of your system. Third is ask yourself what you're really feeling. Underneath all anger is actually a hidden emotion, a vulnerable emotion. We're sad. We're afraid, we're embarrassed, we're overwhelmed, we're stressed. Anytime you are angry, you're actually something else. And if you express the vulnerable emotion instead of the anger, that brings people closer. Saying I'm afraid or I'm hurt or I'm embarrassed, these are the things that draw people near while lashing out in anger or making little passive aggressive jabs don't resolve anything. The fourth step is try and see things from the other person's perspective. Michael and Jan have no idea what's really going on with the other person. They just see behavior that they don't like and they stop there. If Michael could actually understand why Jan feels like she's spiraling, why she feels like she needs to control something in her life because she her life is so completely out of control that she brings it into the home that she can make this her castle. She could feel in control, then she could feel stable. And if Jan could understand that her doing that is making Michael feel small and marginalized and unseen and unheard and unwanted, then they could actually get somewhere of, well, Jan, what can we do to help you to have some control in your life and some purpose that's not making me feel small? Michael, what can I do so that I can have space and purpose without making you feel small and marginalized? And then they can have these conversations. And the fifth step is to actually have that conversation. They're not doing this. And that's why it's a freaking hilarious train wreck. If you need help doing this, well, not this, doing the opposite of this, doing the things that I was outlining in your life, please schedule a complimentary 15 minute consultation with a therapist on my team to see if you're a good fit for each other for counseling because they can guide you through this process. The link is in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this episode of The Office Gets Therapized, I want you to check out Jim and Pam Get Therapized. Uh, you can see their relationship's pretty good here, but later on in the show, it almost completely falls apart and they find their way back and it's beautiful. And I walk you through that right here and I cry quite a bit, so it's awesome. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and until next time, keep shining. We need your light. And there's the Jim and Pam video because I deliver. I tell you what I'm gonna do and I do it. It's right there, click on it, watch it, you got time.